it is uh, considered to be unified here so we can code the SQL uh, that is what you call query and the output of that we can get the analysis now those analysis can be viewed by our client and that is the idea Next, extract and load process data extraction takes data from source system data load takes the extracted data and load it into a data warehouse note before loading data into the data warehouse the information extracted from the external sources must be reconstructed so on the first uh, paragraph we have of course you're going to extract data in every database we have and that extraction is something like copying or saving now on the figure itself from the database of the other uh, part they can be saved into a data warehouse or one database itself and it composes of multiple databases so we can extract that to other databases and we can load that to a single database we can load it also to the client who are going to analyze the data that is what you call extract and load process now we reconstruct all of it uh, for example the field itself how it will display on the screen how it will display on the printer that is the idea of extract and load process next controlling the process controlling the process involves determining when to start data extraction and the consistency check on the the second is that controlling process ensures that the tools the logic modules and the programs are executed in correct sequence and at correct time it's very hard to control the process because it is been used by computer but we can check for it okay so but we cannot control it so maybe uh, this talks about when do you need to extract the data and if you want to control it then therefore you're going to make a limit because in computer we can call them limits in computer on how you're going to uh, extract the data and how you're going to load the data there are what you call limits now on the second uh, paragraph it talks about there should be a module and tools in a correct time and it mentioned also correct sequence yes it's true why according to the data warehouse when the data came from the database itself you need to uh, classify it so if you're going to classify it then therefore it should be in a correct sequence and correct time another is that you're going to use logic module so when we mention of a logic module from uh, data itself to the reality okay from data raw data must be put up in reality that is the logic module so that's all in the controlling the now we're finished with the topic number two now let's proceed with the last topic we have when to initiate extract when to initiate extract data needs to be in a consistent state when it is extracted example the data warehouse should represent a single consistent version of the information to the user in a customer profiling data warehouse in telecommunication sector it is illogical to merge the list of customer at 8 p.m on wednesday from a customer database with the customer subscription events up to 8 p.m. on Tuesday this would mean that we are finding the customers for whom there are no associated description or subscription now uh, 
you will notice that the example here talks about when to initiate extract okay when to initiate extract is depend upon the request because if there is a request then we can initiate extract we can extract the data again uh, if it is online and uh, they look at something like browser so there should be no what they call approval of the person and it is the same there should be needed a request because we cannot extract data if there is no request now right here it mentioned about the customer itself okay subscribe when do we need to extract the data okay uh, let's have an example to make it more clearly if you have a YouTube and you have a channel on YouTube you cannot exactly extract the data okay you cannot also load the data upon uh, the creation of your uh, channel so you're going to give an event or to use your channel another is when you uh, extract the video itself if you are creating foreign input or loading you cannot extract it also that is the idea so this event okay upon the subscription of the customer it is not been associated because you cannot use it exactly but in a longer period of time you can extract it and carefully uh, manage the uh, customer subscription in the database itself that's the idea now next we have loading the data after extracting the data it is loaded into a temporary data store where it is cleaned up and made consistency or consistent note consistency checks are executed only when all the data sources have been loaded into the temporary data store now uh, mention here that if you're going to clean it up you're going to put it into a temporary data stored so it means to say there's a storage okay to summarize check index or indices uh, sort the data and this was been a function of uh, data integrity that is consistency if your data doesn't have integrity then it is not consistent now maybe they are pointing out right here how does the consistency of loading the data so if there is no logs then the con it is considered to be consistent but if there are logs in terms of online uh, power interruption uh, another is uh, a bad weather then the consistency is considered to be having its uh, trouble why because it flows on the air the data online flows on the air another is it flows on the cable itself in figure 18 this figure show extract initiation so we have here on the first uh, left part extract crm erp lop now it goes directly to transform which is processes root and map then it will go to load okay so we have extract transform load and this figure 18 shows extract initiation and you will already know that this is a what do you call the ETL itself so ETL which are connected on the data warehouse from the database itself next we have clean and transform process once the data is extracted and loaded into the temporary data store it is time to perform cleaning and transforming here is the list of steps involving cleaning and transforming as follow first clean and transform the loaded data into a structure second partition the data aggregation 
Now next, clean and transform the loaded data into its structure. Continuation. Cleaning and transforming the loaded data helps speed up the queries. It can be done by making the data consistent as follows. Within itself, with other data, within the same data source. Next bullet with the data in the other source system. Third bullet, with the existing data present in the warehouse. Transforming involves converting the source data into a structure. Structuring the data increases the query performance and decreases the operational costs. The data contained in the data warehouse must be transformed to support performance requirements and control the ongoing operational costs. If you're going to ask me, about the initiation of the loading of data again it's very hard it's very easy to look at the screen and analyze but if you're going to ask me of how to load the data and it is considered to be inaccuracy a state form it's very hard and it is a work of the IP. Now, in to us, when we create a program, uh, plenty of my students having a trouble with the connection of databases itself to the system application. Now, this trouble, uh, it's very hard to load uh, data into a more consistent approach. That is the problem with loading the data because the loading of the data it depends upon the request of what is needed to be viewed but not all of it okay so that's why we have a what do you call before the view of the load data there's a what do you call the metadata or another is the data mart so if there are huge data on the data warehouse itself we need to segregate it then after the data mark segregation of it we need to load it and the loading it's depend upon the request okay next part here partition the data it will optimize the hardware performance and simplify the management of data warehouse here we partition each fact table into multiple separate partitions so when we said partitions we are uh, one whole we're going to cut that into a one half or one fourth or one eighth and that's what they call partition next is aggregation aggregation is required to speed up common queries aggregation relies on the fact that the most common queries will be analyzed a subset or an aggregation of detailed data uh, when we said aggregate it is something like what is the direction of the data or does the direction have its speed so that is what you call aggregation next is backup and archive the data in order to recover the data in event of data loss software failure or hardware failure it is necessary to keep regular backups archiving involves removing the old data from the system in a format that allows it to be quickly restored whenever required so backup and archive the data when we said archive we are saving the data but we are not removing it and backup is something like the same we are saving the data but we are not removing it so backup and archive are the same when we said the archive we are making the data save and put up a name in its uh, exact date and time then you're going to store it now backup is something like you're going to copy all the data in the system itself any changes in the system and that is backup archive are specific if you are going to copy the database only then that is what you call archive 
if you're going to copy all of the system then that is what you call backup for example in a retail sales analysis data warehouse it may be required to keep data for three years with the latest six months data being kept online in such a scenario there's often a requirements to be able to do month on month comparisons for this year and last year in this case we require some data to be restored from the archive so only the data that's why they use archive but if it is the system they're going to use backup that's next we have query management process this process performs the following function as follows first manage the queries help speed up the execution time of queries directs the queries to their most effective data sources ensures that all the system sources are used in the most effective way second monitors actual query profile if we're going to identify query it is a selection of what uh, is needed to view as an example of the field so the speed of the query depends upon what you type or what is needed field to be displayed if you need a few field only then that put up in a speed position but if you needed plenty of fields then of course it considered to be in a slow position the information generated in this process is used by a warehouse management process to determine which aggregations to generate this process does not generally operate during the regular load of information into a data warehouse and that is true why because we cannot generate query if there is a loading or a regular load something like you need to input then you're going to browse it it cannot be possible because database are very different into system and application so we are talking here three systems to integrate a uh, database system operating system an application system can you imagine that three so if you're going to input it into the record itself you cannot have a uh, regular loading because they are inputting so remember that the data warehouse is a collection of different data into different parts of the world it is work next validation board we're finished with the data warehousing system processes and process flow in data warehouse and also when to initiate extra congratulations we successfully finished our lecture 6 thank you and good luck